I analyze over 100 designs made by junior UI UX designers and here is 8 most common mistakes they do in. In today's video, we're gonna take some examples from my full-time job and we're gonna highlight what's wrong, when they usually happen and how to fix them. I'm also gonna show you methods and plugins I use every day to avoid those mistakes. Let's get into it. Let's start with the easiest one to fix. The main purpose of doing designs in Figma is to then give them to developers to code either as a website, web app or mobile app. So when I open the Figma file, I wanna know what's happening on the screen. The design might look gorgeous in Figma, but if it tells nothing to the developer what's going on on the screen, then we're missing the purpose. On this file, there are no notes, no annotation, no explainers. So how am I going to know what's going on? Secondly, if you ever used a web builder to build a website, you might notice that if you add image on the canvas, it's asking you for alt text. That's the text that Google is using to identify what the image is about. When you have slow connection, you're also gonna see that text instead of empty box. It also is used by a screen readers. I know it can take loads of time, but here is the plugin I use that does it all. With one click, it scans your file and overlay blue line annotation for every key element heading button links images navigation and footers following the actual web content accessibility guidelines as well as the european accessibility act you can instantly see what's missing edit annotation right in san figma and even export clean documentation for developers each key element is specified so it's not only accessible to everyone but it also makes your whole design to dev workflow faster clearer and of course client ready once we know what design is about let's break it down and analyze each element from ui point of view many beginners overuse shadows gradient stroke blur and even illustration more on that later so we have one gradient in this pattern I can see as well there is stroke and even drop shadow to those cards. Looking down, we have graph with again overlaid gradient and at the end we have some background blur. The best advice I learned is to start your designs in a grayscale. Also, did you notice that there is no primary color in this design? It might look like it's green, but might as well be purple or maybe even gradient because they all got similar amount on this page, nothing grabs my attention. Instead, we can try 60, 30, 10 color rule, when 60% of the UI is neutral colors like white or here black. 30% is for complementary color like grays and 10% for the primary color. So I'm gonna start by removing all the drop shadows and strokes from those containers. So this simple change with reducing colors is already making the design look more modern and more clear to understand. The thing that annoys me the most and can change design dramatically is the spacing. When I scan our original design, here we got 12.2 spacing between those elements, 22, 16, 26, 27. There is no real scale, no consistency with the spacing. So here is a simple way to improve spacing quickly. It's called 8-point grid system. Basically, any number you use need to be able to divide it by 4 or 8. So instead of 15 pixels, we're gonna use 16 pixels. Instead of 29, it will be 24. So here we have one group and another group. I can take them both by holding shift on my keyboard. And next, I'm gonna hit shift A. And now we have our auto layout panel showcasing on the right side. Let's set the space in between to be 16 pixels. Same, I'm gonna repeat for the below cards. They again gonna be 16 pixels and spacing between up and down. Also, I'm gonna set to 16 pixels in. This one is very common, especially if you have less than one year of experience designing interfaces. Next, let's count the number of font weights that I used on our original design. So here we have a bold font. Next, we have medium. Here we have regular. Then we have black. So we already have four options. And I would say that's too, too many. In terms of font sizes, it's not that bad. We have more or less clear hierarchy. 
There is no tragedy, I've seen way worse designs. It's better to start with less options rather than have too many options and everything is gonna look very inconsistent. For font weights, ideally we just want a semi-bold for headings and regular for paragraphs. For font sizes, maybe 4 to start with, heading, subheading, body and caption. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change all the headings to be font weight medium, only this part with balance, I'm gonna set it to semi bold and all other fonts, I'm gonna keep it as a regular. Let's talk about colors. This story happened to me actually last week. The product manager came to me and said that developer didn't copy the colors from Figma one to one. I checked the designs, compared with developer code and I was convinced he did. So why my product manager was keep saying that the colors are off? It turns out he was testing on Android and I was testing on iOS. You see, different color can look a bit different when you check in in different surroundings or on different device. For example, if you go on a sunny day outside compared to when you're in a dark room at home. And this is why guessing contrast and color never work. So let's use the color contrast plugin and check what's going on. First, I'm gonna start with our original design and I'm gonna click start scan. As you guys can see, we have 32 passed and 52 failed according to web accessibility standards. We can see exactly which text didn't pass and the exact ratio. So let's click on this virtual card and it's gonna highlight where it is in the design. It's also gonna show us which values it didn't pass, so it didn't pass for the large text and normal text. Main reason I'm using this plugin over the others is because it gives me a color suggestions either for foreground or background. And finally, let's talk about copy and content on the page. Your UI can look amazing, but at the same time, the app can be useless. Looking at this example, both those elements taking us to the same page, which is the personal account. So might as well just combine them all and remove the go to account button. Secondly, we have those cards that taking loads of space on the page and definitely much attention, but there are not the primary action here. Primary action should be to check your balance and probably recent transactions so you know where your money is going. So what I did is I kept the functionality of the cards, but I removed the illustration and used the simple icons that have more meaning what's going on. For example, the plus icon to add money, the cards to see your card details, create invoice, three dots to see more options for this particular card. And because we moved all that section inside the top section, now our recent transaction goes on top. I also condensed the top part, so I moved the text Hey Joe to the top and then put the avatar notification closer together because we don't know how long someone's name can be. We cannot just use Hey Joe over here because it might overlap with our buttons. So I just opted for generic copy, which is welcome. This way it can be welcome for everyone. The goal is simple. The designs need to be easy to scan and understand. Going down, we have this graph, which I haven't touched yet because this is again mistake that I see a lot and not only in junior designers. The line graph, it look actually nice, but it tells me nothing. So I've added the legend and labels. Now this really looks like a monthly graph and the month is not finished, so the end of the graph is a grayscale. The copy is much more clearer than the previous one when it was just spent. So now we have the current monthly spending value and compare to previous month. To take this one step further, I would recommend to design one more view when user click on the graph, so we have our daily range spending. Lastly, I updated the press room section, so it's gonna follow the exact layout when everything is contained in the box and to read more news, we're gonna click the button see all. I also changed this background blur into progressive blur and added a little tint on the image so the text is even more readable. When it comes to copy, try to use short action-based labels that describe the outcome and what the section is about. If you're not sure what copy to use, in Figma there is this button where you can rewrite the text and if you don't have this button because it might be in the paid version or not released to everyone yet, you can try to use different AI like Claude or ChatGPT. 
So here are the three stages we went through in this video. We checked for weak contrast, random spacing, overuse effects, poor hierarchy, accessibility, as well as confusing charts and over complicated copy. I hope this video helped you to spot the mistakes that you might be making. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I also added all the plugins and methods I mentioned in the descriptions. And as always, see you next time. Bye!